Hello folks, in this video I'm going to look at loading in some additional images so I can add in some animations for these characters. Now animations are quite straightforward to do. If I come down into this fire class that I created in the last video, I've got my init method and within here I'm loading in a still image. Now if you notice this image is idle forward slash zero and if I come into my folder structure where I've got all my images, within night I've got different structures here for attack, death, hurt and idle. But within idle, I've got eight pictures from zero to seven. So these are all just still images, but if I was to flick through them, you can see that it gives the impression of an animated character. And that's essentially what we're gonna do within Pygame. You're just gonna load in all of these images and then put them in a list and iterate through them one by one at a certain speed that's gonna make it look like it's animated. So to do that, first of all, I need to create a list for this. So I'll come down here within my init method of the fire class and just underneath where I've got this alive variable, I'll create a new variable, which is going to be called self.animation underscore list. And I'll just put empty square brackets, which indicates that it's an empty list to start with. Now further down here, where I'm loading in an image, I need to change this line of code. So rather than loading in one individual image, I actually iterate through them all and load all eight. So to do that, I'm going to use a for loop. Now here I can say for i in range range 8, which means it's going to go from 0 to 7 in reality. I indent this line under here, and I can substitute this bit here for curly brackets, and in here I can just put i. So that means that every time it iterates, it's going to change the i variable, and then it's going to load that particular image from this folder structure. So once that's done, I still need to scale them as I was before. So I also need to indent this, but I'm not actually setting it to my self to image just at this point. I'm still loading them into my memory and adding them to the list. So I change this line here to IMG. So it's essentially going to load it in first and then it's going to scale it and then it'll move on to the next image and so on. So of course, before it actually finishes the iteration and moves on to the next one, I need to make sure that I add this image into my list. And here I can say self.animation underscore list dot append. So there's just a regular Python list. And within here, I need to make sure that I append my IMG. So by the end of this iteration, I'm going to have this list, which is going to have eight entries within it. And that's going to contain all of these idle images. But of course, what's missing now is my self dot image variable because I deleted it to replace it with this. So I need to come back down here and say self dot image equals. And I'm going to be accessing my images from the animation list now. So I can say self dot animation list, but of course I need to give it an index value. So the index value is going to be controlled throughout this game as the animation progresses. And for that, I need a new variable that's going to control which stage of the animation I'm in. So I come back up here underneath my animation list and I say self dot frame underscore index equals zero. So I'll start off at the very beginning of the index with zero, but then as the animation goes on, I'll increase this index and that's going to control which picture I'm taking. So for now, I just put in square brackets at the end of self.image. And here I say self.frame underscore index. So when this is first initialized, although it's loading in all of those images into the list, my self.image is just going to be set to the very first index point, which is going to be my start and animation point. So I just want to run this code and make sure I've got no errors. And there you go. So it's still showing exactly the same as it was before. However, the difference now is I'm no longer just loading the image directly. I'm now loading all of the images, putting them in a list, and I'm showing the very first instance of that list. So I can now start adding in the actual animation. And for that, I'll have a separate method. So I've got my init for my initial constructor, and then I've got my draw method just for putting that image onto the screen. So what I want to add here is a new method called update. So I'll say define or def update, and the only argument it needs is self. Now the animation is going to be based on time. So essentially what I want to happen is after a certain amount of time has passed, I want the image to move on to the next one within the list. And that's what's going to control how quickly this animates. So I need a variable for that. And I'm going to define it within my update method. I will say animation underscore cooldown equals 100. And the next thing I need to do is make sure that I have update, I'm updating my image at this point. Although I have just created it within my initial constructor, this line here, this update method could be called at different times throughout the loop. So I need to make sure that as soon as I call it, I'm updating my image with the correct index. So I can copy this line from above and just put it down here. But I'll just add a comment, first of all, to say 
handle animation, just to explain what all this code is going to be doing, and then a comment to say update image. So this is just being directly copied from up there. It's exactly the same thing, but by this point, my frame index may have changed. So I just want to make sure that I'm using the latest image that's appropriate for that animation. So like I said, this is going to be based on time passed, and that means I need a way of actually measuring time. So the first thing I want to do is work out what time, or rather what stage I was at when this instance was first created. So I come up to my init method again, and I add in an extra variable here. So this one is going to be called self.update underscore time equals pygame.time.getTicks. So that'll give me a stamp of when this instance is first created, and that way I can look at how much time has passed since that point. So I can come back down to my update method, and I can just add an if statement here. So I say if pygame.time.getTicks. So I take the I use this line again here. So I take the current stamp and then I take it away from self.update underscore time. So I'll type this out and then I'll explain what this is all doing. Animation cooldown. All right, so essentially I'm saying take the current time, take away the time when it was first or when it was last updated, and if the difference between those is greater than this 100 milliseconds, then that means that it's time to update to the next stage in the animation. So within here, I need to first of all make sure that this variable has changed. So I'll copy this down and I'll say self.update time equals pygame.time.get underscore ticks. And then I actually update the index itself. So I say self.frame underscore index plus one. So we increase it by one. Uh, and actually, I'll just add a comment up here just to separate these sections and explain what's going on. So check if enough time has passed since the last update. Now, of course, this update method isn't actually being called within the game loop, so nothing's going to happen yet. So let's come down here where I've got my main game loop. And here I've got night.draw. So just before that, I can put night.update. So I want to update them first, and then I want to draw. And then the same for the bandits, I can say bandit.update. Now, if I run this code, it will give me an error, or it should give me an error. There we go. So you'll notice it ran for a little bit of time, and they are actually animating now, but then it gives me an error. And the reason for that is essentially what's happening is, if you remember, I've loaded in eight images within this list. So the animation is all working correctly. It's animating through those eight images, but then it gets to what it thinks should be the ninth image, because this frame index has increased beyond that. And it tries to access that from the list, but the list doesn't contain that many images in it. So it throws this error saying that we've gone too far and basically there's not enough points within the list. So what I need to do here underneath all of this code where I'm updating my index within the update method is I just need to add an extra section where I'm actually looking, what, looking at how far I've gone within the list and if I'm about to exceed it. And this is the point where I reset my animation back to the start. So this is where I add in my loop. So I'll add a comment here. If the animation has run out, then reset back to the start. So here we just need to say if self.frame index, which is this value that has just been updated, if that is greater than or equal to the length of that list, so we say length of self.animation underscore list. If it's greater than that list, that means that we've run out of entries within it. So the animation is complete and we need to reset back to the start. So to do that, we just say self.frame underscore index is zero. So if I run this code again, it goes through and you can see they're just bobbing back and forth and the animation is just looping over and over and over. But what if you have, want to have more animations? So at the moment we only have an idle animation but it would be good to have an attack animation and then hurt and death and all the other ones that I've got images for. Well, if I come back up here, at the moment I have my self.animation list. So I could just make more of these lists and have a bunch of different uh, lists that I access. But what I'd like to do instead is use this as my overall animation list and then essentially make it a list within a list. So each of my individual animation stages, so idle, all of that's going to be its own list, attack will be its own list, but then all of them will be added into this master list. And I will access the particular animation that I need using an action. 
So I'll go through it and I'll explain uh, as, a, as I code this in. So just underneath where I've got my frame index, I will add a new variable, which is going to be called self.action. And I will set this to zero. So I'm going to use numbers to control what action I'm uh, actually wanting the player to do. So I'll just explain, I'll put a comment here to explain what these are. So zero is idle, one is going to be attack, two will be for the hurt animation, and three will be for death. Now these are going to be used not just for animations, it will be used for in, uh, in the actual events and to handle attacks and, and death and things like that, but it's going to be handled for animation as well. So this animation list stays exactly the same, but where I'm loading my images underneath here, I actually add a comment here to say load images, I want to store them in temporary lists. So before I start this for loop, I'll define a new list and I'll just call this temp underscore list. I don't need to add a self to this because it doesn't need to be a part of this instance. It's just a temporary list that I'm going to be using to update my animation list. So in here, I do it in the exact same way. I just put in a pair of square brackets and that creates an empty list for me. So now here, where I'm loading in my each individual image for my idle animation, instead of putting them all straight into my overall animation list, I'm just going to change that to temp list. So for now, when this loop is complete, I'm going to have this temp list, which houses all of the individual animations for, or individual images for the idle animation. So when that's done, I can add it to my master list of my animations. So here I can say self.animation underscore list dot append. So exactly the same way, but in here, I put in my temp list. So this will become a list of lists. And now because this is the first list that I've added, this means that at index zero within my animation list, I'm going to be getting my idle images. So that's how I'm able to control which images I want. So whatever I add in after this is going to be my attack lists, my hurt list, and then my dead list. And then I can access them using this action variable. So let's show how that works just now. At the moment here, I've got self.image equals self.animation underscore list, and I need to give it an index position. So before, when it was just a, one list containing a bunch of images, all I needed was one index for it. But now, because it's a list of lists, I need to add two indices. So the first index is going to be the action. So I say in here, self.action. And then the second index stays exactly the same. That's just my frame index. So with that done, I need to make the same update down here. So I say self.image equals self.animation underscore list. So add in a square brackets here and say self.action. And lastly, I need to make sure that I've captured it within here as well. So now this len is going to give me the list, or sorry, the length of that overall list, rather than how many images are within an animation. So again, I need to access the index of that particular animation. So it's going to be self.action. So if I run this code now, it should still work. There we go. So it's exact, it's doing the exact same thing as it was before, but it now has an extra layer to it, which is that all the animations that I've got so far are housed in a greater list, and that's what I'm accessing. So that means that I can quite easily add in more animations to it. Uh, so let's do that just now. I've got my images here that I'm loading in for idle. So I can just copy this entire section uh, including this line here. So all the way from the comment down to self.animation.list append, I can copy all that and just paste it again underneath. Because the code is going to be repeated again, but now I'm going to be using the code, or I'm going to be loading the images for the attack animation. So let's just update these comments so they make a little bit more sense. The first one at the top is going to be load idle images, and the second one is going to be load attack images. I start in the exact same way. I empty my temp list, and then I go for my range. I still have eight images for the attack animation, but within this line here, I need to make sure that this bit is changed because now the directory for the images is forward slash attack. That's where I'm holding uh, all of the images for the attack animation. So we do the exact same thing, load them in, then they get scaled up, and then they get added to this temporary list. And then once that's done, it gets added into my overall animation list. Now, because this animation list already has the idle images within it at index zero, that means that the, the attack images are going to go at index one, which if you remember, my self.action variable at one corresponds with attack. So I can still continue to access that animation easily. So if I run this code again, 
I shouldn't get any changes. It's still loading in the idle animation. But if I come up here and change my action, let's make this one. Now all of them are constantly looping through the attack animation. So that means that although I've loaded everything in into one master list, being able to access them is quite straightforward. All I need to do is change this action variable. If I had used different lists for each animation, then I would have had to specify which animation list I want. Now I just need to change the action. So I hope this video explains how to do animations in Pygame. Uh, in the future videos, I'm going to add in more animations and I'm going to add in a way of actually being able to flick between them within the game. So I want, for example, an attack action to trigger the attack animation. So I'll add all that in as I go. Uh, for now, if you found this video useful, then please leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with these, then feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.